Lesson 7, Conditional Statements and Deductive Reasoning. Your learning targets for this lesson are to identify, write, and analyze the truth value of conditional statements, write the inverse, converse, and contrapositive of a conditional statement, and apply the law of detachment and the law of syllogism in logical reasoning. Your vocabulary words are conditional statement, hypothesis, conclusion, truth value, negation, converse, inverse, contrapositive, logically equivalent statements, and deductive reasoning. Let's start with the definition. A conditional statement is a statement that can be written in the form if P, then Q. The hypothesis is the P part of a conditional statement following the word if. Your conclusion is the Q part, and it follows the word then. If you look at the symbols, we have P and an arrow and a Q. This statement in math terms says P implies Q. We can also draw a Venn diagram that demonstrates the same idea. If P, then Q. P is a subset of Q. If something is in the set of P, then it is also in the set of Q. By phrasing a conjecture as an if-then statement, you can quickly identify the hypothesis and conclusion. If today is Thanksgiving Day, then today is Thursday. Let's look at this statement more closely. If today is Thanksgiving Day, there's that word if. That means that the first half of this sentence is our hypothesis. Today is Thanksgiving Day. Then Today is Thursday. This would be the conclusion. Today is Thursday. Because we know that Thanksgiving falls on a Thursday. A number is a rational number if it is an integer. The if tells you that the second half of this sentence is the hypothesis. A number is an integer the number is a rational number. This makes sense since integers are a subset of the rational numbers. Now you try it. Pause your tape. A number is divisible by 3 if it is divisible by 6. Did you say that the hypothesis is a number is divisible by 6? If so, you are right. That would make the conclusion a number is divisible by 3. When we write in math terms, we want to make sure that we understand what our notation is saying. If P then Q, can also be written if P comma Q or Q if P. P implies Q and P only if Q. And then we can also use the notation with the arrow. Many sentences without the words if and then can be written as conditionals. To do so, we just need to make sure that we identify the sentence's hypothesis and conclusion by figuring out which part of the statement depends on the other. For example, an obtuse triangle has exactly one obtuse angle. But what can we find from this? The first part of the sentence talks about an obtuse triangle. It has one obtuse angle. So if we identify our hypothesis and conclusion, we come up with 
If a triangle is obtuse, then it has exactly one obtuse angle. Using a Venn diagram, we can write a conditional statement from a picture. Notice that the blue jays are a subset of birds because they're a kind of bird. So we can make a statement if an animal is a blue jay, then the animal is a bird. The inner oval represents the hypothesis. The outer oval represents the conclusion. A conditional statement has a truth value of either true or false. It can't be part true or maybe true. It is either true or false. It is false only when the hypothesis is true and the conclusion is false. To show that a conditional statement is false, you need to find only one counterexample where the hypothesis is true and the conclusion is false. Let's try one. Determine if the conditional statement is true. If it's false, give a counterexample. If this month is August, then next month is September. Well, the first part is the hypothesis. If this month is August, then the next month is September would be our conclusion. When the hypothesis is true, the conclusion is also true because September follows August. So the conditional statement is true. If two angles are acute, then they are congruent. Well, first of all, let's remember that acute angles are angles that measure less than 90 degrees. So if we pick any two acute angles, such as 80 and 30, we have a true hypothesis because these are both acute angles. But the conclusion is false because 80 degrees and 30 degrees do not equal each other. Since you can find a counterexample, the conditional statement is false. Let's try another one. If an even number greater than 2 is prime, then 5 plus 4 is 8. An even number greater than 2 will never be prime, because prime numbers can only be divided by themselves or 1. So the hypothesis is false. 5 plus 4 is not equal to 8, so the conclusion is false. However, the conditional is true because the hypothesis is false. Remember, if the hypothesis is false, the conditional statement is true, regardless of the truth value of the conclusion. The negation of a statement, P, is not P. And we write this with the tilde, the little curly Q, and P. The negation of a true statement is false. And the negation of a false statement is true. So let's go over this. A conditional statement is a statement that can be written in the form if P, then Q. The converse is the statement formed by changing the P and Q around. If Q, then P. Other conditionals are the inverse, which is a statement formed by negating the hypothesis and conclusion. Not P implies not Q and a contrapositive, which is the statement formed by negating and exchanging the hypothesis and conclusion.
not Q implies not P. Let's write a converse, inverse, and contrapositive of the conditional statement. We'll use the science fact to find the truth value of each one. Our statement is, if an animal is an adult insect, then it has six legs. The science fact we need to use is, adult insects have six legs, no other animals have six legs. Let's start by finding the hypothesis and conclusion, the P and Q of our statement. If an animal is an adult insect, this would be the hypothesis. Then it has six legs. This would be our conclusion. The converse, we said, is where we say if Q, then P. So if an animal has six legs, then it is an adult insect. No other animals have six legs, so the converse is true. How about we try the inverse? If an animal is not an adult insect, then it does not have six legs. No other animals have six legs, so the inverse is true. We can also write the contrapositive. Remember, this is where we say not Q implies not P. If an animal does not have six legs, then it is not an adult insect. Adult insects must have six legs, so the contrapositive is true. Related conditional statements that have the same truth value are called logically equi equivalent statements. A conditional and its contrapositive are logically equivalent. So are the converse and inverse. The logical equivalence of a conditional and its contrapositive is known as the law of contrapositive. Up until now, we've been talking about inductive reasoning, where we start with a small picture and we include more examples to come to a conclusion. Deductive reasoning is the process of using logic to draw conclusions from given facts, definitions, and properties. Let's decide if the conclusion is a result of inductive or deductive reasoning. There is a myth that you can balance an egg on its end only on the spring equinox. A person was able to balance an egg on July 8th, September 21st, and December 19th. Therefore, this myth is false. We started out talking about the only day that we could balance an egg on its end. But then we included more dates when this occurred. Since we're including more information, this is inductive reasoning. Let's try another one. There is a myth that the Great Wall of China is the only man-made object visible from the moon. The Great Wall is barely visible in photographs taken from 180 miles above the Earth. The moon is about 237,000 miles from Earth. Therefore, the myth cannot be true. The conclusion is based on logical reasoning from scientific research. This is the result of deductive reasoning. In deductive reasoning, if the given facts are true and you apply the correct logic, then the conclusion must be true. The law of detachment is one valid form of deductive reasoning. It states, if P implies Q is a true statement and P is true, then Q is true. 
Let's check that out. If we're given the side lengths of a triangle are 5 centimeters, 12 centimeters, and 13 centimeters, then the area of the triangle is 30 centimeters squared. The area of triangle PQR is 30 centimeters squared. Our conjecture is the side lengths of triangle PQR are 5 centimeters, 12 centimeters, and 13 centimeters. Let's identify the hypothesis and conclusion in the given conditional. If the side lengths of a triangle are 5 centimeters, 12 centimeters, and 13 centimeters would be the hypothesis. Then the area of the triangle is 30 uh, centimeters squared would be the conclusion. The given statement, the area of triangle PQR is 30 centimeters squared, matches the conclusion of a true conditional, but this does not mean the hypothesis is true. The dimensions of the triangle could be different, so the conjecture is not valid. If we're given in the World Series, if a team wins four games, then the team wins the series. The Red Sox won four games in the 2004 World Series. Our conjecture is the Red Sox won the 2004 World Series. Once again, let's identify the hypothesis and conclusion. In the World Series, if a team wins four games, this is the hypothesis. Then the team wins the series. This would be our conclusion. The statement, the Red Sox won four games in the 2004 World Series, matches the hypothesis of a true conditional. By the law of detachment, the Red Sox won the 2004 World Series. The conjecture is valid. Another valid form of deductive reasoning is the law of syllogism. It allows you to draw conclusions from two conditional statements when the conclusion of one is the hypothesis of the other. The law of syllogism states, if P implies Q and Q implies R are true statements, then P implies R is a true statement. This should remind you of if A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C. Let's determine if the conjecture is valid by the law of syllogism. If a figure is a kite, then it is a quadrilateral. If a figure is a quadrilateral, then it is a polygon. The conjecture is, if a figure is a kite, then it is a polygon. Let's let P, Q, and R represent the following. P is a, a figure is a kite. Q will stand for a figure is a quadrilateral. R will be a figure is a polygon. We're given that a figure is a kite implies a figure is a quadrilateral, and a figure is a quadra quadrilateral implies that a figure is a polygon. Since Q is the conclusion of the first conditional and the hypothesis of the second conditional, you can conclude that a figure is a kite implies that a figure is a polygon. The conjecture is valid by the law of syllogism. Given if 2y equals 4, then z equals negative 1. If x plus 3 equal 12, then 2y equal 4. x plus 3 equals 12.
B. If the sum of the measures of two angles is 180 degrees, then the angles are supplementary. If two angles are supplementary, they are not angles of a triangle. The measure of angle A equals 135 degrees, and the measure of angle B is 45 degrees. Our conclusion for the first one would be that Z equals negative 1. If 2y equals 4, then z equals negative 1. If x plus 3 equals 12, then 2y equals 4. And then we're told that x plus 3 does equal 12. So by that logic, then z is negative 1. For the second one, our conclusion is that angle A and B are not angles of a triangle because angle A and B are supplementary angles equaling 180 degrees. For the next class, please answer the following questions. If a conditional statement is false, what are the truth values of its hypothesis and conclusion? Number two, what is the truth value of a conditional statement whose hypothesis is false? And number three, can a conditional statement and its converse be logically equivalent? Support your answer with an example. Be sure to place your answers in your folder for the next class period.